What's up, y'all? Uh, Coach Victor here from the Thai Boxing Institute. We're uh, we're heading out to to Phoenix, Arizona, for uh, the Spring 2022 USMTO National Muay Thai Tournament. Straight back from the CSA Coaching Clinic. I was there for four days last week, from Thursday to Sunday. Uh, learned a ton of stuff. A lot of amazing, great coaches, great athletes from around the world. Um, Coach Bob Perez, um, Fabio Pinka, they were all there. Brian Popejoy, Mal Tsatui, I forgot the, the coach's last name, but um, he's out uh, in Costa Rica and Phuket. Uh, look him up, Mal, uh, I'll, I'll put the, um, the link in the description below. If you guys ever get the opportunity to go to the CSA Coaching Clinic, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's great for networking, great for learning, and sort of expanding your your coaching as well as your striking skill set. Lovely day in LA right now. It's going to be 85 degrees tomorrow. I'm gutted that I have to leave, but duty calls. We have uh, six athletes competing. We have uh, Coach Jeannie, Coach Grigo, Coach Javi, uh, Greg, uh, Jade, and uh, the newest member to our competition team, Joshua. Um, everyone is either competing in A, B, or C class, so I'm going to have my hands full. And usually my, my wing person, Coach Javi, uh, I have him as my second corner, but he is competing, so I'll be doing a lot of the corner work on my own. I just feel like a bit overwhelmed at the moment, especially considering we had six athletes competing. Um, fortunately for us here at the Thai Boxing Institute, we have such a tight and loving, supportive, and helping community. So thank you everyone that, that lent a hand and, and sacrificed their own training time to help our athletes. I don't know what to say. We've just been very active. You know, we're what, basically a month back from Denver where Coach Jeannie and Aaron competed. And then now back to it again. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. You know, it's, uh, I, yeah, I just gotta admit that I feel a bit spread thin um, coaching the team trying to sort of uh, negotiate a, a new space for the gym uh, while <laughs> still training my clients still trying to train myself and dealing with my, my arm injury it's still pretty bent out of shape uh, and definitely got hurt again over the weekend at the CSA coaching clinic but fuck it you know uh, fortune favors the bold. So I see y'all in Phoenix. I leave tonight. Take care. Peace. All right, guys, fight day already. Uh, how many people do we have on deck? Six. Today, today, today. Four, four baby. Four. four. We have Coach Grigo. Yeah. And Coach Coach Gina. Jay. Yeah. And then Greg. Yeah. Uh, it's Friday. Friday, right? Yeah, so first day of the tournament, and we're already on deck. We're all super excited. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, keep you guys posted. Mini see you day. on the other side. Minis day. Mini yeah, day. baby, minis. Biggest mini right here. <laughs> Peace. So I think it's, what time is it? Like 7 o'clock? 6, 6.50, 6.49. Uh, we just had two tough loss uh, split decisions by Coach Grigo and Coach Jeannie. Uh, we're in good spirits, you know, it's not fun losing um, Split decisions could have gone either way, but from the coach's point of view I just felt like they didn't do it. They didn't do enough. They weren't aggressive enough. They they're just kind of moving back a bit too much for, for What was given to them like opportunity to counter strike all the other feigning was working But they just didn't want to capitalize on that for whatever reason. I don't know Yeah. Absolutely. What do you guys want to say? Coach, can you go first? Um, 
was too apprehensive, didn't pull the trigger. But what we trained worked when I threw it. And I, that's important to highlight. Yeah, I mean, we've got to go back and watch the tape. I think it's all still processing. Um, but what Coach Grigo said uh, just felt defensively strong, and I think I got comfortable there instead of um, really pushing the pace and being more aggressive and assertive. So just be, will be something we work on for the next one. Yep, grateful to everyone, um, and just having to focus on the rest of the team. Yep, it's a fight game. You win, you lose. Fight train to stops for no Move one. forward. Like I say, you can just you can't control everything, but you can control the way you react. And uh, yeah, of course, it's it's hard to not get upset at first, but we still have the rest of the team, and we're very hopeful and wishful for for good things. Um, always eternally grateful for the opportunity to be able to do all of this and to share the ring with other uh, very talented Nakamoys. So we wish our opponents the best of luck and the rest of the tournament bracket. Um, but yeah, and we got Jade and Greg coming up in like, I don't know, maybe in maybe a half hour. God damn, it's like hurry up and wait, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, Day two of the tournament, um, it's 8.30 in the morning, we're up early today, we have Josh and Coach Javi fighting today, potentially I think three bouts if we if we move on th through the brackets. Um, tough day yesterday, we had four people compete, we had three, <laughs> three split decision losses with one victory coming from Jade, being the last fight of the evening, so it's just like a quick turnaround from all this energy and emotion to a late dinner and then back at it right away um, but that's that's sort of what the tournament's about it's, it's very you have to be present the whole time you, ha you have to expect the unexpected like for example today no one told us that they were going to cancel just the uh, starting ceremony so all the bouts start like a half hour before they were initially going to start so everyone's there at the venue right now and I'm waiting to get picked up uh, in regards to yesterday's performance, you know, um, them being split decision losses, I feel doesn't change the fact that there was uh, a few things some of our athletes were missing. One of them, I think, being the sense of, like, lacking the sense of urgency. Uh, these are two minute rounds. Uh, I feel like you, you have to take it from the get-go. You can't lose the first round. You, there was an interesting statistic told to us last week at the CSA coaching clinic by Coach Brian Popejoy. So, okay, so someone took all the bouts from IFMA, all the decisions, and, and ran some like stati statistical tests in, in regards to that. And they found that 90% of people that lost the first round ended up losing the, the fight. Um, that's a big percentage. And we know with like statistical Information is not about like like correlation doesn't mean causation, but there's something to be said about the data. Um, in any case, in regards to our athletes yesterday, I feel like all of them lost the first round. They're just too too tentative, too apprehensive, and then started picking it up maybe halfway through the second round and I feel that's way too late. Even picking it up at the start of the second round is a bit too late. Uh, Jade fought her opponent. Jade just blew her out the first round, but then the second round her opponent came twice as hard. Like just came back twice as hard and in the third round I felt like her opponent started taking the lead. In any case, Jade won, but split decision. It was a really close fight and um, much respect to her opponent. Coach Jeannie, she, she there's a, a big improvement from her, this fight today versus her fight a month ago out in Denver. Uh, she wasn't moving a, 
she wasn't moving back as much, but there was still a lack of volume and there was still too much movement backwards. And that's sort of just been my, my constant nagging to her. Uh, Coach Griego, I, I felt he just fought way too apprehensively. Um, and then Greg, you know, we're, we're working with Greg's psychology because he is a, a phenomenal athlete, um, a star in the gym, but when we put him in the ring, we, we just, we don't see that person. We were having this conversation last night at the at the dinner table with the team, uh, trying to troubleshoot what we need to work on, like trying to identify our, 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 our weak issues and, and try to pivot them towards our strength. And it's, it's, it's tough to, to be like a very, very empathetic and compassionate coach, but at the same time, uh, the athletes need to understand that we're we're fighting. We're get, we're gonna fucking punch someone in the fucking mouth, and you gotta go out there and do it, right? And, and it's to my apprehension to not want to say, oh, you know, it looked like you were scared, but some of them look scared. I'm sorry to say, and I hate that sometimes I have to handle these situations with kid gloves. But if if in your own psyche in your own mind and in your own heart you feel like you're scared you're it's gonna it's gonna be magnified in the ring you know everyone's gonna see your doubt if you've if you've prepared properly right if you ran if you ate if you rested if you you know you put in the work and, and you're true to yourself and, and your own emotions that you're capable of doing this there should be no reason for you to be scared. Except that you're gonna get hit, except that you're gonna get hurt. Um, but you have to give it your all. You have to give it 100% in there and you can't leave any doubt. Um, we're all watching, especially me. You know, you're gonna be under the, the massive scrutiny of my my coaching, you know, that's my job. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm, I'm here to help you perform. I'm here to, to make you win, basically. And um, I need the athletes in there to perform to the best of their abilities that I see in the gym. I this is another point of, of this is like a, another nagging point of of me as a coach in that I don't want gym fighters. I don't want people that excel in the gym and look phenomenal and can do the work and, and can and can bully everyone in the clinch and, and can run the miles and and can and have the the, the 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 discipline of hard training and dieting and rest. That's very important, and I want to train athletes that are like that. But all that goes to waste if you you can't make that that connection from the gym to the ring. We we got day two. We're we're hopeful, wishful, and grateful to to perform. You know, so wishes luck. See you on the other side. Peace. Um, time for the second part of the tournament. I'm here with Coach Javi. Uh, it's I think 6 p.m. right now. Josh is on deck again against a very tough opponent from the mango tree, Honolulu. Uh, to the semifinals, so we'll see how it goes. Um, good first fight for him, uh, kind of shake off the rust. Uh, aside from that, Coach Javi had a pretty tough fight as well. He didn't get the W, but he is in good spirits and in semi good health. <laughs> yeah, I got some things here and there, but it was to be expected. Um, got oh, right foot's a little dinged up. We got some good knees, but and that uh, good spirits. The team is here. Everyone's very. Uh, it's, it's. It feels good to be in good company amongst friends and the coach here, just taking care of all of us. So, good stuff. So we'll see how it goes. I'm pretty beat. It's been an emotional two days and been a ton of work. So, uh, wishing, work. wishing Josh the best, and we'll see how it goes. See you guys on the other side.
Oh, that's my face. We did not thank you. Look, Gregor, also director of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Day three of the USMTO uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and as you can tell by the sound of my voice, it's gone. <laughs> um, I'm pretty exhausted. We had another pretty rough emotional day. Um, Coach Javi, as uh, mentioned earlier, or as you saw earlier, had a pretty physical and rough fight and unfortunately lost. And we had Josh move on from the qualifying bout to the semifinals against um, an opponent from the Mango Tree in Honolulu. And uh, what what a great fight. Man, I, we, we had a game plan. Josh adjusted so well to it and came out and, and, and performed and, and exceeded my expectations. So I'm real proud of how he did and how well he did. Um, he unfortunately lost the uh, his opponent, Noah, who's really strong, really solid, really really technical, uh, kept his balance, kept his composure, and um, dropped Josh in the second round too with the straight right. But Josh was able to recover and still come back and rally and finish the fight strong. So. Win or lose, you know, someone's got to win, someone's got to lose. Uh, unfortunately, Josh lost, but to me, that, to me, what matters most is how you lose. If you lose, it, it, it matters how you lose, right? Do you, do you give up or do you, you fight through adversity and, and give it your all till the sound of the final bell, right? And uh, Josh did that, exactly, so happy for him. Not injured, you know, just a little beat up. Um, but congrats to his opponent and everyone at the Mango Tree. Uh, I go there. I go to Honolulu quite often, and that's where I hang out um, most of the time. So if you guys are ever in Oahu, uh, check out the Mango Tree. Great people. Today we have Jade uh, in the finals. Um, the last, <laughs> our last athlete to, to give it off. So hopefully she doesn't feel the pressure or need to perform I'd rather her be in her very calm and usual Zen state and come out and do her thing you know she's she's so funny she's just very quiet very a stoic you know um, but in the ring she just turns into someone else and it's always fun to see her perform uh, so we'll see how she does as far as the weekend goes it's been exhausting I when you have <laughs> when you have the euphoria to keep pushing you through uh, it's great and it works well but then like the opposite of that is the dysphoria the ups and downs of, of, of the emotions of, of losing you know um, that's been pretty rough but we were able to like every evening we were able to get together and, and talk about why this is happening and adjust towards making things better as far as like organization uh training training modalities we'll see what what positive we can pull from this uh, right they're not losses they're lessons as far as how everyone else is doing everyone's a bit beat up um but their spirits are high they're we've been able to just kind of spend time together without the the, the pressure or the idea, the thought uh, looming overhead as to the, they have to compete the next day. Um, so that's been like a sort of blessing and that we're able to just enjoy our time together. Um, everyone's in good spirits, real happy and uh, looking forward to seeing Jay perform. So last foul, she's on in like an hour and a half. About to pack up, check out and head to the venue. See you guys on the other side. Take care. Airport. 
Uh, this is now Tuesday. We got back from the tournament Sunday night, most of them. They drove back from Phoenix, whereas I flew out. Um, got back super late and just took yesterday to recover and, and let my my throat heal from all the, the yelling and cornering uh, we were doing over the weekend. The last thing I left off at, I believe, was uh, Jade's bout in the finals. There were two low blows that happened, and on the second one, Jade got a point deducted, and we, we lost the fight. Uh, it's, it's a very... It was very sad, and uh, Coach Jeannie put it in a very eloquent way in that it felt a bit unjust. <sighs> what can I say, man? It was just such a, an emotional weekend. Uh, I believe us losing and being humble allowed us humility. And this this also gave us the time to be able to reflect on what happened. And, and talk about all of our shortcomings as like athletes, as a coach, as coaches, and as a team in general. I, I talk to people in that I tell them or I ask them to ask themselves deep in their, in their heart, in their mind, like in their psyche, right, their soul, their spirit, whether this is something that they want to do. Deep inside, everyone knows the answer. Um, and you just, if, you just, if you lie to yourself or if you lie to me, all of that is very apparent in the ring. Um, I would say some of the athletes over the weekend fought really scared. And that was such a big disappointment to me because that's the number one thing you can't do is, is, is lie to me and go in there and, and as we say, fake the funk uh, because it's going to show and it's very glaring. Uh, so if you're watching this, really, really think about whether you want to do this. How? You're going to fix this if you want to keep doing it and decide if, if, if fighting is for you. Whenever the team fails in this manner, uh, I always question myself and my abilities as a coach and try to figure out what happened. It's, it's been hard dealing with my, my arm injury. In past training camps, um, uh, I'm like the barometer for what people need to work on. I, I generally and usually spar with everyone. Um, I, I clinch with everyone and um, I hold pads for everyone, right? And all of this stuff is, is on schedules. I'm coming to terms with my my age and my inability to take uh, putazos, right? When I was young, I was just so resilient, uh, felt invincible, right? And as I started maturing, especially in the role of coaching, um, I've realized that my body is, is less um, less capable of taking punishment, um, as you can see with my arm. And uh, there was an instance before we left to Denver, like the day before, uh, I was sparring with Koshini and she hit me with a, a brutal right hook. I, she's so fucking fast and it came out of nowhere. And for sure, I had a concussion. <laughs> Uh, so all of the, all of these things, right, just kind of are falling within, like, uh, as I mentioned in the Denver video, the inflection point of the gym, where it's going, and myself as a coach and, and my own career. It's been tough feeling this vulnerable, and this gave me a great opportunity to to test some things out for coaching. Like, you know, I always talk about trying new things, figure things out, maybe things work, maybe they don't, um, but you never know unless you try. So this was the first fight camp where I was basically hands off. Uh, I was gone for the first two weeks of the six weeks. And then for these last four weeks that I was back, I wasn't able to spar with anyone, you know. Um, maybe like drilling, but no clinching, no sparring. So I think a lot of what went wrong, this fight camp, this tournament, um, kind of had to do with my inability to work with everyone. But we're a smart group, very, very intelligent, very capable, very um, creative people. And I'm hoping we can figure this out because it's like, okay, I gave myself to 40 and I am going to be 37. And who knows how much longer I'll be able to, to take punishment. Uh, and furthermore, for sure, I will have to get surgery on my arm this year.
I do want to mention that I think the MVP of the tournament was Jade. Uh, for her first bout, I I wasn't I wasn't there to corner. I I, I felt like a spectator in that I was just blown away <laughs> by her technique, um, by her tenacity, her her skill, uh, her IQ. It was, it was incredible to watch. You know these things that we were working on since like the start of the year till now we're, we're coming up in the fight and um, I was just blown away because usually the turnaround for technique um, is much longer <sighs> when I when I first got Jade almost a year ago I think a year ago uh, let's just say a year ago um, she was 0-3 and, and she came up to me and I kind of, kind of quietly teared up and, and was like you know can I can I join the gym you know I'm I'm tired of a feeling like a loser and that just kind of like it pulled at my heartstrings uh, and I, I you know I grabbed her and I was like uh, listen I'm gonna make you a champion you're gonna be a winner but you're you're gonna have to listen to what I say and, and just train hard and, and believe this we're gonna make you a champion and since then till now she was um, on a six fight win streak right F for the exception of the finale we all knew she won like once that point got deducted she went to her corner uh, i was like you gotta you gotta finish her like you you lost already we're we're down you know we it's it's near impossible to come back from a, a point deduction right especially if, if we don't know what the rounds were like um, we weren't able to see the scorecards, but it felt like it was one for one. Um, don't get me wrong, the girl was tough. You know, she she came to fight, uh, but Jade started outworking her. Um, point got deducted. Ref was like, "All right, fight!" And then Jade, able to adapt, pounced on the girl, just started lighting her up with some boxing. Um, and I feel like if it was like maybe another ten seconds, uh, she would have gotten an A count and then maybe even out the, the fight but eh, it is what it is <laughs> that's one of our sayings at, at TVI it is what it is and that's the past and we can't change it we can only move forward uh, so with Jade I'm just very proud of her performance and the way um, she's shaping up to be a fighter she, she's so young and I told her you're, you're 21 don't be married to your record in order to be the best, you have to fight the best. Um, so sometimes that means losing. And unfortunately, that was the outcome for Sunday. I'm very proud of the team overall. Everyone was so, so open and, and so willing to hear the feedback. And this is all just gonna make you guys better athletes. Um, and that's, that's basically it. That's the tournament. We have um, Aaron fighting in the IFMA World Championships at the end of May out in Abu Dhabi and her fight camp started this week. She'll be moving to LA for the remainder of her fight camp um, where we're going to be really hitting it hard. So maybe next TBI goes to somewhere. Uh, the video will be TBI goes to Abu Dhabi for the IFMA World Championships. Just want to say thank you to all the TBI supporters, uh, everyone watching this, to our sponsors, um, Frequents, Kawada Dental, Golden Era Apparel, Out of Step, Flash Art, Touch Brilliance, uh, Kintsugi Bites, and, and everyone that's donated, the uh, anonymous donors to Miss Christina Workman, you're the, the biggest supporter of our team. And we're all eternally grateful for everything everyone does for us. I, I hope I didn't miss anyone. Uh, if you guys want to support the channel, you can go ahead uh, do a few things you can go to our Instagram and add us at the Thai Boxing Institute check out our merch tbimerch.com hit that subscribe button hit that like comment uh, and if you guys have any questions about anything in regards to coaching and Muay Thai please hit me up uh, I, I love talking to you guys and I love hearing what you have to say and helping everyone out so thank you guys for watching till next time take care bye